every year we get a bunch of video games that come out. Some of them are really awesome, some of them, well, not so much. But I think this year has been an exceptionally solid year when it comes to new game releases. Every platform that I own, I've played at least one awesome game on it. My Nintendo Switch, I played Metroid Dread. Fantastic game, absolutely loved it, even though Nintendo, for some reason, didn't want me to talk about the game. Over on my PlayStation 5, Ratchet & Clank, A Rift Apart, one of the most beautiful looking games that I have ever played in my life, and a super fun action adventure platformer game. On my Xbox, I've been playing a ton of Halo Infinite Online, and it's a very addicting game, and something that I'm really enjoying playing. And of course, we've had other great games release in this past year, but it seems like there's always one or two games that come out in a year, they get really good review scores, they get really good impressions from people that play the game, but for whatever reason, they fly under the radar. They're not quite as big as these other games. And in today's video, we're actually talking about a game that, well, this was one of my games that I didn't play this year. I had my eye on it. I wanted to play it. I planned on picking it up on Black Friday, but for whatever reason, I never got around to playing it. And that is Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy. Square Enix reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a sponsored video on the game. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I do. I want to play this game. I want to see what the hubbub is because every review I've read for this game has been super good. Everyone that's played the game that I know personally that has told me about this game says it's super good. So I want to be able to experience this game and that's what we're going to do in today's video so if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button be sure to like and share the video as well because like i said this is probably the best game of the year that you didn't buy so the plot of the game is based on the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy comic book and not really so much the movie, but since I've never actually seen the movie, I could be totally wrong on that. But the game does do a really good job at getting you up to speed if you're someone like me who just doesn't really know about all this stuff. The game starts out with you as a boy who just turned 13 years old named Peter Quill in a flashback scene in your very 1980s basement. Even though it's a really small part of the game, I actually really like the flashback scenes because it gives the backstory to Peter's character and how he became the main protagonist in the game named Star-Lord. There's lots of cool stuff like butt rock music to listen to, posters on the wall, a Coleco vision on the floor, just a lot of great attention to detail in this basement. As I said, Peter becomes Star-Lord, but I won't explain how that happens, even though you might already know, because I'm sure if you read the comics and know the movies, you know how he became the Star-Lord. And in the present time, he is the leader of a ragtag group called the Guardians of the Galaxy, consisting of characters named Gamora, Drax, Root, and Rocket Raccoon, which, I mean, I'm partial to because I love raccoons. Once again, I didn't really know much about all of these characters, but they all have very distinct personalities, right down to Groot saying, I am Groot, all the time, and it make for some really great banner in the game. Your team essentially gets into a bind, you have to make some money in a set amount of time, and thus they try to figure out ways to acquire this money, and these situations that they get put in are the main basis of the plot. I would say one of the strongest parts of the game by far has to be the writing in the game. Usually a lot of superhero games, the writing falls a bit flat, but it seems like lately the Marvel games, well, maybe aside from the Avengers, sorry Square Enix, it just wasn't that good, have all had strong writing, and Guardians of the Galaxy honestly is no exception. The banter in between your teammates is absolutely hilarious at times, I literally laughed out loud, and it can impact relationships and dialogue trees that are also present in the game. Now, while the dialogue trees don't necessarily impact the ending of the story or anything, it does impact how the game plays out in certain sections, so it does give the game a bit of replay value. Even the side characters are well written, and no one really feels like an afterthought in the overall story and the dialogue in the game, which helped me quite a bit to get into it. Now, gameplay is the star of the show with Guardians of the Galaxy, and honestly, there's quite a bit of stuff to go over. Unlike some other games that may look similar to this, in this game you only control Star-Lord and it's not an open world experience, instead focusing more on the story driven side of things. Now some people might not like that, but honestly I do, as the whole control everyone open world thing is honestly kind of played out at times, especially in this genre of games, so it was refreshing to see mostly everything just focused on the Star-Lord. Star-Lord has a ton of moves at his disposal and there are a ton more to unlock via upgrades in the game. You have control of an elemental gun, sort of like a dual-wielded pistol that is your main weapon of attack. Beyond that, you have a double jump, a dodge, and like I said, you end up getting a whole bunch of more moves via the upgrade system in the game that keeps things fresh throughout most of the game. 
both in and out of combat. Your AI controlled teammates are crucial and you can give them commands which will help you in battles such as like super strong attacks, Groot using his vines to tie up enemies and so on. You can also upgrade your teammates attacks and give them more and new moves which keeps things fresh throughout the adventure. You also build up a meter called a team huddle, which has Star-Lord giving an inspirational speech that's chosen by you. He puts on a classic 80s high energy song with actual licensed music that follows a super attack. Beyond that, you also get elemental upgrades for your elemental guns, such as ice that will freeze certain enemies and dish out major damage. Now, it might sound like a lot is going on in terms of the combat in the game, especially considering you do control the, your teammates as far as what move and what ability they're going to use, but it's pretty easy to get acclimated with everything, especially if you've played an action-adventure game before, and there is a lock-on system with enemies that helps a ton when targeting them. Beyond just the combat, the game also offers a lot of deviations in terms of gameplay. One of the main areas is a bit of puzzle solving that will require you to use your brain a little bit, and most importantly, your teammates. Groot can do things like create a bridge across large gaps with his vine abilities? Yeah, we'll say vine abilities. Drax can use his power to lift up things, pull things, so on and so forth. The puzzles aren't really super deep or anything like that, but it is a nice diversion from the combat in the game and keeps the pace fresh. You also have smaller sections of different elements such as ship flying and even a little bit of stealth sprinkled in. There's more types of gameplay modes too, but I'm not going to spoil everything for you. Beyond that, there are some minimal quick time events and honestly, I'm kind of tired of quick time events. Now they aren't very often and they kind of jump out at you out of nowhere and if you fail it, you usually have to watch a little cutscene again, you can't skip it. I know, I know, it's a minor thing and I know some people love quick time events, but I'm just kind of over it. Presentation-wise, the game really shines and helps suck you into this Marvel Universe. The graphics of the game are really good, with a ton of variety in the backgrounds and areas you traverse and battle in. It's a linear adventure, which means there's very little straying off of the main path, but they do a great job of keeping the main path entertaining and filled with variety. All of the character models in the game look great, and the enemies you encounter all have some variety in both size, scope, and of course how you attack them. I wouldn't say it would win any sort of graphical awards or anything like that, but it does look very clean and the frame rate stays rock solid throughout the game even when the combat gets super hectic. The audio in the game is also stellar and yet another highlight of the game, featuring full voice acting for all of the characters that honestly sounds phenomenal, solid sound effects, and the soundtrack of the game features a ton of licensed 80s music such as Tears for Fears, Gary Newman, Billy Idol, and a lot more which helps suck you into this world that they are crafting with Guardians of the Galaxy. As far as complaints are concerned, I really don't have anything major, but there are a few minor issues I had. The quick time events, like I said, just, well, I know, they just kind of suck. And I know that's preference based, and there are some weirdos out there, which you may be one of them who love quick time event stuff, so I'll respect that. One thing I noticed is towards the later stages of the game, the combat can feel a bit samey as you have most of the major upgrades, which can feel a bit repetitious, but personally, I didn't really mind it all that much because I thought the combat was just really enjoyable. Some of the story elements I feel were a bit lost on me as like I said, I'm not super familiar with the source material, but I guess on the other side of the coin with that, it does mean that there's more nods for Marvel diehards, which can definitely be a good thing. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is available on like literally everything, and that actually includes the Nintendo Switch. Now the Switch version of the game is a cloud version, but it does offer you a free demo to see how it will run, of course contingent on your internet connection. I tried it out and honestly, it was pretty decent, but other versions on things like Steam and Xbox definitely had a much higher frame rate. It's pretty much dependent on your internet and all that stuff, so if you plan on checking out this game on the Nintendo Switch, I would definitely download the demo and test it out because that's what your experience is going to be throughout the game should you pick it up on the Switch. Now, as far as the other versions of the game are concerned, Guardians of the Galaxy is truly one of the best games that you did not play this year. It crafts a great story that is self-contained but also has bonuses for fans of the source material, has great dialogue, and most importantly, the combat is very fun and very fluid throughout the adventure. The game is about 15 hours or so to play through depending on how much extra stuff you find, but there's also stuff like hitting costumes you can find in the game as well as bonuses. That's right, it's not paid DLC. You can actually unlock stuff in these areas for things like more costumes, so there is a bit of replay value in this game as well. 
it's kind of unfortunate that not a lot of people play this game and hell honestly like i said i probably would have missed out on this game myself if square enix didn't offer to sponsor a video but honestly i'm very glad they did Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is a great adventure from start to finish, filled with charm, great presentation, and really, really fun combat. Alrighty, so those are my thoughts on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I actually played this game on my PC. Yes, RGT played a game on his computer. Is the world ending? I mean, probably, but you know, I'm obviously not the biggest PC gamer in the world. That's the code that they sent over, so I figured, you know what the hell, we'll try it out, and thankfully, my PC handled it like a champ, but I really had a blast with this game. I really feel like it's an under-the-radar game, even though you would think it being a Marvel game, like it wouldn't be under the radar, but maybe some people sort of felt burned out by games like Avengers, and they didn't realize that Guardians of the Galaxy was a strictly, you know, single-player experience that actually focuses just on the Star-Lord character, and I think that makes the the game stand out way much more than a game like the Avengers which has you know just a bunch of different characters going on in the game so let me know in the comment section down below if you played this game and if so what you thought about it if not do you plan on picking it up now because really don't sleep on this game I'm gonna pick up a physical version because I'm just a weirdo who likes physical versions might pick it up on the Xbox might pick it up on the PlayStation I don't know whichever I mean I have both of them but let me know your thoughts on this game in the comment section down below and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like and share the video huge huge thank you to Square Enix for sponsoring this video I'm really glad you guys did because I probably would have skipped out on this game because I don't know, I've just been playing a lot of Halo, but I'm glad you guys reached out to me and sponsored this video so that I could check this game out because it, re it really blew me away. There's a link in the description box down below to sort of track it if you want to get more information on the game. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.